Boy, Paul, that was a lot of work, but I want us to think about what you just did. You took general relativity, and we went through with that concept, and you have derived in a universe which is isotropic an equation, an equation of motion that takes all of general relativity and makes it into a single ordinary differential equation which we can hope to understand rather than the normal 16 nonlinear linked uh, differential equations which are general relativity. So this is a major triumph and I know it wasn't easy but uh, it's a very important uh, equation. And for the next few videos we're going to talk about how we solve this equation, <coughs> what the results are and its general behavior. It is a differential equation because it's got calculus and it's got a dA by dt in here. So it's um, actually second year university maths to solve these things, but we'll show you with a, a bit of effort you can get a lot of the way there. We're going to start off by asking about how this equation behaves right now, at this particular instant in time. Okay. So what we know is right now the universe is expanding, and the evidence for that, if you remember, was the Hubble law. We had a, a graph from all sorts of different galaxies showing how far away they are and how fast they're moving. So what does this Friedman equation tell us about that? So if we look through and just remind ourselves what that Hubble law is in vector form, we have the velocity uh, of an object, of course, is defined as how it changes over time. So that is written as dr dt, the vector. Yes, we're assuming we're, we ourselves are positioned at uh, zero, so everything's measured away from us. Right, and we can measure that as the size of the motion, so that's like the speed. Mm -hmm. And then here we give the velocity the, in the direction and yep. the length of that distance. So these vertical lines mean it's, these are vectors, but this is just telling us it's the amplitude of the vector. So that's, that's right. the amplitude of the velocity divided by <coughs> the amplitude of the distance times the distance. And so that would cancel with that, and this will just give us this. Right. Okay, so that's telling us that the vector velocity is given by the ratio of these two scalar numbers. That's uh, times the vector distance. But if we remember from the Robertson-Walker metric, that r, the distance to something, is just a times its coordinates. Right, where a is not acceleration here, it's the scale factor, it's the thing that tells you how big the universe is. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, we can then substitute in, if we differentiate this, x is what we call co-moving coordinates. Those are the fixed coordinates that don't change as the universe expands. But the distance something is going to change because a of t is going to change. Might get bigger, might get smaller, we don't know yet. So what that's telling us is that the velocity is going to be given by a dot over a. Mm, times the, the distance. So that's just the Hubble law. Yes, it is. It's, so a dot over a, the rate of change of the scale factor divided by the scale factor, is going to be telling us how fast space is expanding. Right. And indeed that's what we've got here. So the Hubble law there. Yes. And so that means that we can rewrite that equation right now, what's going on right now, in terms of the Hubble law. Yes, so we've given us the Hubble's constant squared is this times the density right now plus this over the scale factor right now. And we normally define the scale factor today as 1. Right, and so there we've used the fact that a dot over a squared was on that side of the equation on the previous slide. All right, so how fast the universe is expanding right now is going to be related to the density and then something to do with the size and the curvature. But one could imagine that the universe we live in has no curvature, for example. Yes, um, so the first thing you can tell is that Hubble's constant isn't really a constant. No. As at different times, the density is going to be different and the scale factor is going to be different. And so Hubble's constant a billion years in the past or a billion years in the future is not going to be the same. So maybe it shouldn't really be called Hubble's constant. I mean, it's, it's Hubble's a constant. Hubble's parameter. Hubble's parameter. So Hubble's constant is Hubble's parameter value right now, yeah. if you like. Yeah. But yes, we can also, remember we've talked about the values of k and how they make the universe curve one way or the other. But this gives us a way to work out what k is. Mm. We could, in principle, work it out by trying to measure pi on a really large oh, scale, but that's so pretty hard. If we measured the density right now, and, and Hubble's we measured constant. the Hubble constant, then we could presumably solve for what this is. And that would potentially give us an idea of how to measure k. Yes. So the simplest case is k equals 0, which is our flat universe. And that's the dividing line between these three models. If we get k equals 0, it just means this equals that. So we get this here. 
Okay. And we can solve that to find the density. And this gives us a critical density, which will vary with time again. So this is the critical density right now at t naught, which is defined as today. Yep. It's going to be 3 Hubble's constant today squared over 8 pi g. These are all constants. And so this is a critical value at k equals 0. So if the density is higher than this, then it turns out that we have a universe that has more than the critical density. K, then instead of being 0, becomes plus 1. Mm -hmm. And if you're below this density, then K has the negative value. that negative value, right. And what is this value? If you plug in Hubble's constant of about 70 <coughs> kilometers per second per megaparsec, which is roughly what we think it is today, that comes out as about 9 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per meter cubed. That's a very small number compared to the 5,500 kilograms per meter cubed that the Earth has. But if you turn that into astronomical units, that's about 10 to the 11 solar masses per cubic megaparsec. Oh, so that's a 10 to the 11 solar masses. Well, that's about a galaxy. That's about what a galaxy weighs, like the Milky Way. Yeah. And a cubic megaparsec is roughly the distance between galaxies. So that figure. means that the amount of stuff, if we look astronomically, is close to this value. So it is a very low density, but that seems to be not too far off the actual density of the universe. Hmm, okay. So uh, it's not obviously vastly higher or vastly lower. So we could be a universe that's not too far off a K, K of zero, a flat universe. It could be one side or the other, but it's not going to be a hundred orders of magnitude of one way or the other. So presumably measuring that is going to be one of the big things that we need to talk about within cosmology. Yes, yeah, so clear density is absolutely crucial. And so crucial we give it its own parameter, omega, which is defined as the ratio of the density today to this critical density. <coughs> ah. So that means that if omega equals 1, mm -hmm. then the universe is flat, k equals 0. Yes, and if omega is greater than 1, that's yep. telling us we're in a positive k universe, which is the spherical universe, finite. Mm -hmm. And if it's less than 1, we're in one of these saddle-shaped universes. Oh, okay. So that's a very useful parameter. Okay. So that's, uh, density is clearly going to be absolutely crucial here.